Dr. Schrader, in recent years, there's been um, a really rapid growth in technology. Uh, um, you know, we've seen the, the rise of, um, of the iPhone, of Twitter, of other social media platforms. And those are things that have, in some ways, enabled uh, easier communication between people. Um, it connects uh, one person to a whole lot of other people. Um, but it's also been argued that these same technologies might degrade, um, might undermine people's ability to access an e education and also interfere with somebody's ability or inclination to have personal interactions with someone else. Uh, I, I heard from one the president of a large university recently, uh, she told me that um, as people have become more accustomed to learning things by YouTube and through Google searches, uh, students today, even uh, highly performing students in terms of their entering test scores and, under, and high school GPA, uh, sometimes don't like to memorize because they consider it useless. It's one of many ways in which it's changing the way people learn. Uh, but what do you think about the, the potential effects of technology on social capital formation? Well, I'd start out by saying there's a lot that we still don't know about the effect of technology on social capital. And there is some evidence that uh, increased screen time with among younger people on their phones correlates pretty strongly with increased uh, incidences of self-reported mood disorders, depression, and, and the like. There is, there's some evidence that, that that is the case. Um, what I would say is from our own survey work, uh, we found that people who regularly interact with people that they consider close friends and family are generally less lonely and happier. And the more friends that you have, the less lonely you are. That might seem to, to make sense. What we found through our own survey research is that when people use um, digital technology to communicate with friends on a regular basis, the, that's like interacting often face to face. Now, there's nothing quite like joining together in, in a room and, and solving problems together. That's, we all know from experience that there's something very valuable there. We know that when people are concentrated in well-functioning neighborhoods, that social capital has benefits for the reasons that have been articulated here. Um, but I think one, one thing to, to help maybe uh, mitigate some of our, our worry and concern about the increased screen time. When you, when you walk up into, in, into a room and your kids are there and they're all on their phones and they're not looking up at you, there's something wrong with that. Um, and, 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 I, and I think there's evidence to suggest that we are seeing problems, particularly among teenagers that are, that are related to that phenomenon. However, um, I also think uh, from our own work, we see that when people are in regular communication with people they're close to, whether that's texting, or on phone calls, or um, using other social media, it helps sustain those relationships, and it helps people feel feel less lonely. So there is reason to be optimistic that some of this um, social media technology actually can can help us do things together. And if you actually just examine some of your own interaction, think about people you're close to and how you stay in touch with them. I have a daughter; it's in school in the UK. Um, I thought Snapchat was terrible when I heard about it when it was invented. Now I love it. It's it's a way for me to have visibility into her life every day. I think a lot of people um, can can identify with that. I have a closeness that's enabled through that technology that I, that I didn't have before it existed. And our survey data shows that there's, there's reason to be optimistic that that actually does help keep us uh, more closely connected with people that we love and care about.